I'm Deb Runnels, and I'm the Senior Manager of Wellness and Support Services at the Kirby Centre, and I have worked in the field of homelessness for 30 years. I think Calgarians um, don't always know what women are up against when it comes to homelessness and poverty and really trying to survive in, in this city. It's a city that is so rich with resources and supports, but it also is very difficult to, to try and survive if you're a woman who's facing any kind of issues whatsoever. Uh, certainly for senior women, um, it's very difficult for them to find a place they can call home, especially in that age 55 to 64 group, 64-year-old um, group before women actually can access their benefits and so on, um, and seniors' income. So what that means is that you're living in a province that has uh, the highest domestic violence rate in all of Canada. You're living in a city with uh, high, high rents, and uh, we don't have the highest minimum wage. So even for women who are still working, it's very, very difficult for them to actually make ends meet and be able to work full-time and still find a home. Many of the shelters in the city, uh, over 50% of the people who are living in the shelters are working full time. Uh, it just means that there's just no affordable stock available in the, in the market for rentals. Uh, there's only about 3% of rental stock available, so that's very, very low. And it means that there's a lot of competition for the safe, good apartments to live in. And then also we end up with uh, some apartments that aren't safe to live in and are not um, in any way legal. So it makes it very difficult for women to survive. I think that quite often what people think is that if someone's homeless, they should just go get a job um, and rebuild their life. But if you're fleeing domestic violence, uh, you've lost your life. You've lost everything that you know is familiar. Quite often women have children that they take with them. And women don't always show up in the uh, homeless counts as well because, because they have children. Quite often family members will take them in. They'll couch surf and so on. So it's still not home. Um, and children still aren't living in a place where they can say they belong, but it's at least um, off the streets. And I think as Calgarians, when we see someone that obviously is struggling or facing homelessness, it's really amazing if you could, instead of looking at them and filling in the blanks for yourself, wonder about the story that goes behind what you see, because there's always a story there, and some of those stories are, are just so painful, it, it's heartbreaking. You know, it's, it's kind of interesting because you, you hear the word homeless all the time. It's, it's in the news. Uh, you hear a lot of donors saying, you know, we've, we've been giving money to this forever and the problem isn't being solved, but it's because the problem is so big. And because we're such a diverse city, we have so many immigrants coming to Calgary. Um, and uh, so what it means is that we've got such high demands on the resources that we do have. And ending homelessness is not about just picking someone up and putting them in an apartment. This city is so incredible with the way that people come together and solve the problems. And homelessness is one that's been around, and it always will be. People will always fall into homelessness. The trick is that we have to come up with ways that when someone becomes homeless, we're immediately wrapping a system around them that gets them back out of it really quickly and back into home so that they have a place to belong and they can go on with their lives. Homelessness should be a moment in time. It shouldn't be forever. And I really think that the powerful thing is that we need to always remember that it's about geography. Homelessness isn't about someone's worthiness or their abilities, but it's geography. It's about no place to live, and that should be pretty easy to solve. I think that communities can do a lot to solve the problem, first of all, by education. Be aware, homelessness is not something that happens downtown. It's throughout the city. And uh, so just being aware that there are people in every community in this city who are struggling um, and trying to make ends meet. We've got families trying to, you know, to both parents working, raising kids. It's very difficult to try and, and really make it work in this city. And so communities can come up with ways to solve the problems amongst themselves, running programs, um, offering things for kids to do together, daycare solutions, um, just opportunities for families to get together. Our greatest resources and the knowledge and wisdom and how to solve this is within each person. So the more you bring people together and introduce them to, to other people, the better the chance is that they've got a, a community around them that will make the difference. Somewhere safe to turn when things do get tough. Um, well, it's interesting because we quite often think that people should come to us when they're in trouble. When people are in trouble, it's, it's quite often mixed with such shame and embarrassment. 
And if we, we need to go to them, we need to open our doors as a community and, and reach out to people instead of waiting for them to stumble over us while we sit here with our answers. But it's about going forward and, and reaching out into the community, no matter what role you have, what groups you belong to, um, faith communities, whatever it is. But it's really about being able to open the doors and go out, not waiting for people to come in and then ask for help.